How many of you know about this shooting that happened in Georgia where some kids were accused of going into a school and, and killing four people according to the report? And, and let me see the hands that know about that. Oh, okay, nice. For those who don't, this kid went, was accused of going into a school and shooting up uh, four people dead, two students and two teachers, and then 19 other, I think, wounded at the school. And so the, the, the kid is in jail, and now they have arrested the father because they say that the father gave him the boy the gun. And the boy was 14 years old when this happened, all right? Um, and so the father has been arrested. How many people agree that the father should be arrested, have been arrested? One. You have your hand? You, you look like you're scared to raise it. You do it like this. Are you, are you saying you, you think the father should be arrested? Just a yes or no for now. Yes. Okay. And, and, and the red shirt, no one else believe that Th three, four, <laughs> Joe got his hand, both had their foot, foot up. Four, you believe it, right? Yeah. The father should be arrested. Most definitely. Oh, okay. Uh, anybody else? That the parents should be responsible for the, oh, okay. Amazing. You look like somebody, that, one, that boy that did the shooting. <laughs> Huh? I get that a lot. Y'all better pat him down. <laughs> <laughs> Did they let you out of jail? <laughs> no. Uh, anybody else agree that the parents should be responsible and go to jail? Who disagree? And the rest of you are undecided, right? Uh, okay, undecided. Oh, man. Did the father really give him the guns, yes. or he did? They well, proved according that? to the report, we never know what the real truth. But the father said he bought them because in the South, fathers buy their son's guns, and they started going hunting. You know, I, I, I got a gun when I was 15, too. It was, a, it was just what fathers do. And they I, go out and make a man out of you so you don't be at home with mama at the age of 30. <laughs> <laughs> I took my daughter when she was 12. That's your daughter? Yes. That's your daughter? Yes. Wow. Oh, that's would. amazing. Okay. Uh, All right. But if he did give him the guns and not train him or show the respect that you need to give a gun, uh, I don't know um, if he should be blamed or not to blame. You don't know? No. If he should or not? Yes. You said that you don't know if he, if should he showed the son respect for the gun and all that? Yes, if you're giving a kid a gun, you got to show him that, how to use it and how to, and how to respect the gun. How do you respect a gun? Um, you know, you respect By safety, people. safety number one and all that other stuff. Oh, okay. And so if he did not show him all that, he should be to blame for the boy using a gun? I don't know. It's a thin line. I, I don't think a he should get arrested. A thin line between but... love and hate, man. <laughs> Not between you and your gun. Uh, I don't think he should get arrested, no. You don't think he should? No. And why not? Because they're two different people. They're two different... The, the father and the son? Yes, they're okay. two different uh, souls or whatever, uh, spirits or... Okay. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure. in the middle. I'm not sure, no. Oh, okay. All but right. I'm leaning more towards not for him not to be arrested. Oh, okay. It's not really his fault, so. Okay, nice. Did you hear the show on Friday? Yes. So you heard us talk about it? Yes. And you agree with what you heard? Yes. Oh, okay. Did you agree with Joel? Yeah, the, it's interesting because the first time this happened, a while back, and I did agree with Joel. I even brought it up in church. But this time, I see it as a more sinister plot. And I won't get into the political, but it's a snapshot of what's to come um, if certain people enter office in November. 
it's overreach of the government and it's, it's frightening because what is the age of accountability? How long is a parent supposed to be accountable for something, whether they saw a letter or a picture? I mean, children can be very imaginative and they do and say things as children that they may or may not follow through with, but how would anyone know that unless they're prophetic? Yeah. So, um, no, I disagree. Okay. The father himself didn't commit any crime, and I don't think that owning guns is a crime, and I think that that's kind of what maybe the government wants to do is make owning guns a crime and that's why they're you know wanting to blame the father but i don't have enough information to know like how that family was operating and like you know if the child was being groomed by the parents to commit a crime then obviously they're accomplices to that crime well, but there's, there's no evidence that the child was being groomed to do that because the parents had their own problem mother right. drug addict right daddy so, to me well, the father it, they said the father was in, involved in his life because the father even went over to the school and complained to the school that his son was being bullied. Yeah, that yeah. was another question I had was if the child was being raised by the mother and the father, or like by the mother or the father separately, because like right. I feel like that. It sounded like they were separated, I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, they said the mother had two of the kids, mm -hmm. and the, or the, it sounded like the mother had the two daughters, mm. and the father had the mm -hmm. son. Yeah, I just don't think it's, it's fair to... Uh, yeah, puts one person's crime on another person, and I don't think that owning guns is a crime in and of itself. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. How about the, the young guy right here? You believe the father should have, did you say that uh, earlier? Yeah, but now that I think about it, I think I'm remaining neutral, because I feel like even if all the safety measures were put in place to prevent him from having access to a gun, if he was determined, he would have gotten the gun if he wanted to. He'd have found a way to yeah. commit those atrocities. Yeah. Are you being bullied at school? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 I was going to follow you to school and stand up for you. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So you don't think he should be? Oh, you're neutral. You're not sure. Yeah, I'm neutral. Oh, okay. And you say he should, the father should not have been, or should have been arrested? Should have been arrested. And, and why? I don't think he should have been arrested for the shooting, but I think he should be arrested for giving a minor a gun. And there are two separate happenings. I think he can't take responsibility for the shootings itself, but giving a, a, a minor a gun, I think, is illegal. I don't think your brain is fully developed by the age of 14, there's a reason why you are not yet like an adult by, by law, uh, why you can't buy alcohol. There are certain rules in place. Right. And yeah, I think giving him the gun was wrong. If he wanted to teach him hunting together with him, that's great. But Matter of fact, the boy, according to the report, he <coughs> went in and shot his first deer recently or something. Yeah, I still don't believe that Like, if I had a son, you know, the father could teach him whatever he wants, but, you know, do it together. And when you're an adult, you can own your own gun. Um, when you say that you don't believe that the mind is developed enough at 14 to have a gun? Yeah. Right? And when, it, at what age is the mind fully developed? I don't know if it will ever be fully developed. <laughs> <laughs> so to say, I know 80-year-old people, mine. To, exactly, because I think it's, again, what we're coming back to, right? Like, there's, you have school shootings done by minors because it's the battle between good and evil, and you have adults doing the same things. Yeah. Um, so it's, 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 a, it's a very big question, but... But you still believe the father should have been arrested? I think he should be arrested for giving him the gun. And should he go to prison? Um, I don't really know the difference because I haven't been living here for so long. You don't know the difference between going to prison and not going? No, the, between jail and prison. Oh, I was about to say, he's really white. <laughs> <laughs> they say white people don't go to prison, they're your proof. Uh, <laughs> you don't know the difference between what now? A jail and prison. Jail is where you go and have lunch until they take you to prison. Right. And you spend right. a lifetime. Right. 
did he actually give him a firearm or did he have a firearm that was his, but he still took care of it and like locked it up? And... According to the reports, and we never know the whole truth, right? Mm, okay. The report is that the father gave the gun to the son. Oh. It sounds like the father bought the gun for the son. Mm. And that's common in the South. Yeah, and where I'm from too, like people, my cousins, like their uncles buy them guns and yeah. stuff, like 22s and like... But they keep them all locked up. They don't just like hand them to them. Right on. Yeah. Do you have, how old are you? 16. You have a gun? Nope. Uh, right. Do you want one? Maybe in the future. Nice. Okay. Amazing. I don't know the details of this specific story, but oh, okay. I'm more leaning towards the father not going to jail just because I'm a mom myself. And if my son were to do something at 14 or 15, I don't want them coming for me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know this is a pattern. This is the second time it's happened in the, the history of the United States where the uh, parents got arrested for Tell their kids shooting. Tell me why you think the father should have gone to jail. Because the kid's a minor. And you're responsible for the kid till he's at least 17. After 18, he's an adult, and he, he, he suffers the consequences of being an adult. But until then, until you, you're, the kid is 17, you're responsible for everything he does. Really? Everything. Really? Everything. Really? Everything. Thank you. <laughs> Raymond, you had your hand? Did you have your hand? I did. Are you for the father going to jail or not? I'm for, uh, for him to go to jail. And why? Because it was his responsibility to prevent... Uh, to keep those weapons out of him, out of the reach of his son, it, he owns the weapons. Don't uh, own the weapons. How about if he gave it to the son and he doesn't own it? <laughs> well, he bought the weapons, uh, weapon in the first place. And if he gave it to his son, he maybe uh, his son is a minor, and if he gave it to us, he's still responsible. Even though he bought it and gave it to the son, yes. Because it's one thing uh, if he uh, one thing to give a gun to an adult or sell it to an adult, it's another thing to do the same with a minor. Okay. Well, thank you. Amazing. Joel, uh, you believe the father should? That's your. Uh, you're black. <laughs> yes. You, you, should, you believe the and, and without the long story over again because of time yeah. here. Why do you believe the father and the mother should go to jail and the son? I mean, yeah, I locked them both up, but mainly the father because he was raised by the father. Okay. Yeah. But the reason why I say both is because why aren't both the parents there? That's a failure on the parents' sake. Turn this fan off. Go ahead. But also, like you always say, uh, the, the children should forgive the parents because the parents are responsible for how the children are raised. And that's why you say go forgive because they're the reason why you're all screwed up in the first place. They're the first influences, right? So the parent, the father who was, you know, failed as a father, at least up to this point, not necessarily failed, like it's not, life is not over, but he's responsible. He raised the child. And if your child's gonna, if you're gonna raise your child properly, then he's not gonna know in these ways to go. Just like you didn't know when you were 12 to get a gun. I don't know when you said 12. I got it at 15. At 15, but you were raised properly to know how to, and with common sense and know not to do these certain things. Well, like no one ever taught me how to shoot a gun. But they didn't need to my because My grandfather, you had... they gave it to me and I was like, whoa, I got my gun. Right. And I uh, wrapped off the Christmas stuff and I ran out into the woods and I killed a squirrel. <laughs> right. But your grandfather had common sense to raise you properly and your, and your parents. So that's why you didn't think about shooting up a school. This kid, you the whole story You think this kid was raised up. to think about shooting up a school? He didn't need to be raised to think about shooting a school. All he needed was to be raised with anger, and he was. Amazing. Okay. Well, you got one lady on your side. <laughs> Do you say? I say no, the father should These not. These are my staff folks, that's why I'm asking them, so y'all can see how liberal they are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know him. <laughs> he doesn't know Joel. Um, I say no, the and father not? should not. Um, because fathers give their kids all kind of gifts. And it, it, let's just say he was an, uh, uh, in construction and he was teaching his kid how to build houses. He would give him a hammer, right? 
what if that kid took the hammer and, and knocks another kid? And knocked mama in the head. Right. So Sorry, kid, mama. fathers give, parents give their kids stuff all the time. And also just to go with what Joel blabbered about. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Vicious. <laughs> Joel was mentioning being raised by a parent and how that affects. And, and that, I don't disagree with that. But there's been a lot of, I was an angry kid and, and me and my buddies went out and shoot, you know, shooting. I never shot anybody. And I was angry. So I, I, I just don't think that all kids are, have that mindset to hurt somebody else, whether they're, no matter how angry they are. So okay. I don't think that plays a role in it. All right. Um, Derek, the last one, then I got to move on. Derek is my new PR person for a minute. After this conversation, he won't be. <laughs> no, I don't know how you feel. Go ahead, Derek. Uh, no, I don't believe the father should have been arrested. Right words. Your job is secure. <laughs> I think it's, it could be wise to uh, take the gun away from the kid, but to make a law about it, that's... Uh, way too far. I want you to know you're making a horrible, awful mistake to want government to be involved in this period. You don't want government involved in your life at all. Because the people who are running the government are no different than us. They are evil people. And they hunger and thirst after power and control. And for you to think that the government should be able to decide that the father should go to jail because of what the son did, you may, you're giving power to evil people on both sides of the fence. The, the government don't care about us. They care about money and power. And they care about controlling you. What happened to we the people? It's not supposed to be we the government. The government has no business at all deciding this, period. If the boy did it, the boy should go to court, found guilty or not guilty, and that's it. And the boy should suffer for what he's done, not the father. The government has decided that the father, for no reason other than he gave the boy a gun for a present, which is normal in the South, and I guess it used to be normal all around everywhere when men were in control. They bought their sons guns. And so the fact that the government can tell you and you believe it, that it's okay we go and arrest you for something somebody else did is mind-blowing, even though you haven't done anything, period. And they say, we're going to lock you up and you're going to be in jail for years. And you haven't done anything wrong. It's not illegal to give your gun, your son a gun at whatever age you want to. But the government have told you that it is. And I want you to think about the kind of government we have. And I mean the whole, both sides. They support abortion. They told you that, okay, you can have abortion whenever you want. Just kill the men and children, and we're going to pass laws to make sure you can do it. And you say okay to that. And the father, shut up. You have nothing to say about it. And then the government came and said, um, we're going to uh, take prayer out of the school. No more prayer. And we want your kids to learn everything but about God. And you said, okay, do that. And now they run that. Look what's happening to the school. They said there's a race issue between the blacks and the whites. That we have a race problem, you believe that? What kind of laws they have now? Primitive action, reparation, giving your money to them, and they have not deserved it or earned it. And you can't do anything about it. They said that men, a woman can take a man child during divorce, and the father has nothing to say about it, and you're going to pay up. And you're going to pay for the, the child to have counseling. You're going to pay for the mother to have a representation, and you're going to pay for yourself, and you better shut up and do it. Whether you're guilty or not, whether the mother is lying or not. They said, we're going to cut off your children's body parts 
their body part, and we're going to tell the children not to let you even know about it. And then if you find out about it and you say something about it to the child, we're going to, put you, we're going to take your kids away from you. And you won't be able to say it, have anything to say about it. You want the government making these kind of decisions? The government is no different than all of us. We must be born again. Until you're born again of love, your heart is wicked. And all angry hearts, if you know that all angry people want control, they fight for control. They fight for power. Why do you say husband and wives fight for control? They're, they're not fighting over love. They're fighting on one trying to control the other. The ego is about control. And every human being has an evil nature. That's why you must be born again of the Father so you can have a new nature of God. But anyone that has anger has an evil nature. You're never going to make the right decision. And you want the government? Just think about the, the people in government and stuff they've already done. You want those people making the decision for you? They have, their job is to make sure we have a strong military, keep the roads fixed, and fix the bridge. We didn't hire the government to tell us how to live our life right from wrong and what we can and cannot do. They are not supposed, these are evil human beings. And America is turning its life over to the government. And then even, and I wrote down a few notes, even that the government going to tell you, oh, okay, you should lock down your gun. You got evil people telling you, you should lock your guns up, but their guns are wide open at home. If the criminal come in, they, the criminal is out. But they tell you, okay, you got to go find the key, go in the closet, unlock, hold on, Mr. Criminal. <laughs> I got to unlock my gun. I got to count my bullets. So I know that. <laughs> When I kill you, how many bullets I had left? That's so insane to me, I don't know what to do. And while at the same time, the government, they live behind gated fences. They have bodyguards, security guards, and they're loaded. And you tell, you saying yes to this. Just think about that. You're saying, yes, government, you can tell me what to do. The government said, you, you can't have police prote protection now. We're going to defund the police. You ain't got no police protection. Oh, and by the way, we're going to let all the criminals out there. And then they can commit crime and no bail bond. They can just hang out in your neighborhood and do it again. And you said, okay. Okay, you're the government. You can do this. This is insane. What's wrong with y'all? I mean, I don't mean to make a frown with it. <laughs> but you're like human beings too. You're adults. You can decide whatever, you, whatever consequences happen to your household left between you and your family. It had nothing to do with the government. The government family are screwed up too. They're doing all kinds of weird things in their household. You don't even know about it. I let the kids go out in the public and somehow or another make a media spectator of themselves, but spectator of themselves. But you know, they have the same problem we all have. They're lost, they're lonely, they're desperate. And they're desperate for power. Just as you are. And, and then they say, you gotta lock down your gun. And then they say you gotta train. Oh, let me write that word down. Respect. They say you got to train the kids how to use the gun so that they can respect the gun. Whoever said that in this room, you can't come back. <laughs> no, I'm playing. <laughs> Who said you that you got to respect a gun? You don't even respect one another. You don't even respect your own family. You don't respect your friends. You don't respect your relationship. How are you going to respect a dumb gun laid over there in the corner? Good morning, Mr. Gunn. I surely respect you. When I had a gun, my grandfather had a gun, my father had a gun, all my brothers uh, had guns. With well, those in Indiana, I don't know, but the guns stood at the door all night and all day, all week if no one touched it. 
and I never thought of respecting it. How are you going to respect a gun? And who is the government? What gives them the right to tell you, you got to train yourself on a gun. You got to put your bullets or you got to register with us so we'll know exactly where your gun is located and how many guns you have and if you let somebody else have it. And you say okay to that. They're not living the same way they're telling you to live. You, you got a government mentality. What's wrong? <laughs> it's supposed to be we the people. I know a young guy got bit by a snake. He walked down the road. He got bit by a snake and they had to cut his leg off because he couldn't die. Did the, should the parents have gone to jail for that? Kill all the That's right. Should the parent have gone to jail? You are not supposed to be thinking that way, folks. The government said the other day, and said, up in, uh, in L.A., in California, we're going to give illegal aliens $150,000 to buy a house. Illegal aliens. They put one dime in us and, and no, probably going to rob you when they do it. And you trying to save up $10,000, $20,000, $40,000 to buy a house, you working hard like a slave. And they're going to tell you, no, you got to pay your way. We're going to give the illegals $150,000 to go out and just buy a house. And you're like, oh, okay. Illegals are human too. What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> How come y'all don't think like free people? Really, why don't you think like a, the government worked for us the well, way they used to. Now you work for the government. How come you need somebody to tell you how to think and be and live and what's good for you as an adult? Why? Why are y'all saying yes to this? And there's no end to what they'll do. They'll take your house. You can pay your house off. And if you miss one year for paying taxes on your house, they'll come and take your house. You, even though you're paid for it. Government is just a body of evil human beings. An angry evil human being have no love. And they want power and control. And you're just, oh, giving it up. What, what do you want now, Mr. Government? We'll do it for you. That's a, what's wrong with y'all? I, I, I keep saying that, but I already know it because you're crazy. You have to be out of your mind to think that I'm going to turn my life over to anyone. Look what happened to the blacks. They turned their lives over to the civil rights movement. Because prior to the civil rights movement, thank God I was there. I don't care what they write in the books. I was there. Prior to the civil rights movement, black people did for themselves. They thought for themselves. They bought land. They had uh, farms and cars and whatever they wanted. They had no leader. No leader except for God. They had no leaders. They did not hate the white man. They were not blaming the white man. And when you go to the market and you ran into white people, you're like, hey, Mr. John, how you doing, Mr. Joe? White and black people greeted one another. And then the civil rights movement came along and told the black people, y'all, y'all need to let us be your leaders. Y'all need to let us think for you, tell you how to vote, who to vote for and when to vote. And the blacks said, okay. Well, some of them, the older blacks said no to that. And, and they have not, they have let, haven't let the blacks go since then. It's just bad now. And you tell the black, not all, not all, not all, but more. You know, you need to think for yourself. These people are using you. You're enslaved. No. How about slavery? The white man did this to us as slaves. They didn't do it to you. And you don't know how bad it was. Anyway, you weren't there. And everybody been enslaved in one form or another. And the black, and then if you escape the plantation of the Democratic party thing, thinking 
the blacks will come after you, and they will come after you to destroy you. The same way Satan goes after you when you become aware that you're in prison of your imagination. When you ever get hold of knowing that you're a slave to your thoughts, that's when the war began. Because now you're aware that you're in prison. But most people are not aware that all their thoughts are lies, it's a setup, so they don't know they're in prison, and Satan just have their way with them. Do what he want, he said, tell you whatever he want, and he made you do whatever he want, because you don't know you're in prison. You don't know that your thoughts are your enemy. Your thoughts are your enemy, your thoughts are not your friend. Just like the government is not your friend. Y'all need to wait. I said it before. I want to say it one more time. Y'all need to wake up. How about being an individual? How about thinking and doing whether well, somebody like you or not? Why about how come you won't go for freedom? Why do you want to turn your life over to the president, to the vice president, to the government, to the preacher, to the psychiatrist? I went to visit someone way over yonder over the weekend. And they pulled out their medication. It was time to take the medication. They had, you know those little lunch bags that you put your sandwiches in? Some of them are small, some are big. She had a big one. She had a big bag of medication that was filled from the top to the bottom for daytime. <laughs> for when she wake up. And then she had another bag, a big old full, just filled to the top for nighttime. I'm like, what's all that medication? Oh, my doctor told me I need it. I'm like, what? You got a rich doctor. She has so much medication. I'm like, how can your body take all that medication into it at one time? Doesn't that make you throw up and make you sick? Nah, my body used to it. You afraid not to even trust the doctor. You, you trust the doctor. You trust the counselor to tell you, your problem, you, oh, you hate your mama, you hate your dad, you hate your husband, you hate your wife, okay, you need a pill. And now you walk around looking like a zombie. It's not going to solve your problem, the pill not, for a psychological problem, but the psychiatrist will tell you at $800 an hour that you need a pill. And now the psychiatrist and the, and the, and the pharmacist is cahoots together making booth of money off of you and you can barely function. What's wrong with being free? Why don't you love freedom? The government should not be making this decision. Any decision concerning your personal life, period. The government should only be talking about keeping the roads safe, a strong military so we have to go against our enemy in other lands, and that's it. They shouldn't be encouraging you to have abortion and turn on each other and feel and think this way and give your money. The government wouldn't even put money into our own country. They give it all to Ukraine and other countries. And our country was desperate to protect us from illegal invasion. And you're going to still vote for them because you feel good. They make you feel good. They say nice things about you. And now you feel good, and they hate you. So this is why I want you to really pay attention. You decide who you're going to vote for, but you need to pay attention and not get caught up with the okie doke. The government should not be putting this man in jail unless they prove that he committed a crime. The boy can go, if the boy committed a crime, the boy can go to jail. My son, you did that, you going to jail. You can't blame the father for this. It's insane. I can't believe it, but I do believe it. I understand human nature. Human beings are evil. Human nature is the nature of the devil. That's why you're so miserable. And God said you need a brand new nature. And so what he's going to do if you allow him to He's going to change your nature from evil to good. And then it'll be of his nature. You won't be able to take credit for it because it's him instead of the devil working through you. 
but you don't want the government. Think about the government, what they do, and how they think and what they say. Those are human beings, lost human beings. Their little title may be, oh, I'm a congresswoman, I'm a senator, and I'm a this. That doesn't mean a thing. It's just a title to control you with. It has no meaning at all. I told you the story, then I'll take some questions. I went up to uh, Sacramento, and we were testifying to something dumb. And this black woman represented from California. When uh, I got up, I said, I, I forgot her name now, she's retired. I said, well, I'm Jesse, I'm from this place, and I don't agree with anything. And I said her name and I didn't say her title. I didn't say Congress, Congresswoman, whatever her name was. And she had a hissy fit. She was mad, turn his mic off. He, I'm a Congresswoman, or whatever she said. I'm like, I don't care. Um, the he didn't say all my title. I'm a congresswoman. Who do he think he's talking? I'm, I'm talking to you. I don't agree with you. It was just another person, but people are, are taken back by people too. Stupid titles. A title is just a title with no meaning. It made the person with the title feel good because it's good for their ego. I used to work for a hospital, a lot of Jews. Sorry. <laughs> I love the Jews. And then, so I worked for the Jew boss. What am I, Jew boss? Jewish. Jewish boss. What? Yeah, Jewish. Oh, what's the difference? It sounds nicer. Is there a difference between Jewish and Jew? Same, same. I, that's come from a Jew. <laughs> that came from a Jew. And I treated him like I would treat anybody else. Anyone else, right? And then he would tell me to do things. He would say things to me that I would not agree with. Even if I was staff me, I just didn't agree with it. And he, would say, he, he told me, well, you're the only man i ever seen that don't listen to the boss. I'm like, I do listen to you, but I just don't agree with some of the stuff you be saying to us. I respect him and I did everything. But it's okay to be free. If you don't be angry, and you, you're going to be free, you're going to treat everyone in the right way. You're going to treat everyone the same, no matter what their dumb title is. And you will not put them on a pedestal. You're going to treat everybody the same. God treats us all the same. And he's not concerned about your title. People pay buku money to go to college to get a title. And then the night they can't find a job. But they have a title. Even your mother get mad at you if you speak up to her and you disagree with her, she'll get mad. I'm your mama, don't talk to me like that. So you're my mama, and Mama, you're wrong. You can be free, folks. You don't want the government to rule over you. You don't want it. It should not be okay with you that, unless this man, they prove that this man legally broke a law. You don't want to agree with the government that they can lock up this man. They're coming for you next. If they can lock up one for doing nothing or giving his son a gun, they're going to do it to you. They're going to do it to you because ego, love, control. And they got your approval. You have agreed with the devil, and the devil will always turn on you. You shouldn't be for that. That man happened to, and then especially the white man, sorry white man, they really coming for the white man. They try to get rid of them first and then they come for, for us. But don't do what you want, but I wouldn't be agreeing with the government that they can do this. They decided they want to arrest a man who gave his son a gun. And you said, oh, okay, it sounds good. Our parents are responsible for being spiritual examples for us. And then teach us how to work. But they don't know what we're going to do later. They can't follow us everywhere we go. And the devil working out of our mind. The devil can secretly be working with these kids' mind, and you don't even know anything about it. How are you going to be responsible for that? Amazing. Anyway, I said a lot. But this, 
oh, they should lock up the, they should teach them how to lock the gun. That's dumb. Your gun should not be locked away. Their guns are not locked away. You say one of those representatives lock up their guns? They don't. They tell you to do it. What do you do? You lock up your gun. They tell you, oh, you should know, be trained how to shoot a gun. And you're like, oh, okay, I'll go get trained. I don't need nobody to train me to shoot. I ain't no dummy. Pull the, pull the trigger. <laughs> and if it kicks you back, then that's a plant your feet on solid ground. That's all. But they make you make buku money to go. Doug is a trainer, so sorry, Doug. And they make you go up in a hot heel somewhere and learn how to shoot a gun. And you say okay to that. And then they say, you need to register your gun. You need to let us know where they are. And you do it. And they know where all your guns are located. Well, if you sell your gun to somebody, you need to let us know. Why? Ain't your business I sold my gun. And whatever the person do with the gun that I sold it to is on them. Man, nothing to do with me. But you say yes to the government with that. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? For being all that I can be. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm wrong, Joel? Okay. Uh, only because, and I'm just joking around, but. They told you, one last thing. <laughs> they told you, we are gonna defund your police. So you can't have any protection. Not only are we gonna take away your second amendment, we are gonna defund the police. So you don't have any, any protection. And now we're going to let the prison out, and they're robbing and, and stealing. Over in the valley, they're like breaking in into the same house three times. <laughs> and every time, the, I think the cops like around the corner peeping, and when the, when the criminal leave, the thief leave, they show up. The cops never show up on time to arrest anybody. And the, and the, and the thieves know it. And you said, okay to that. Think about that. You said, okay, let's defund the police. So who's going to protect me when I need it? Nobody. And if you protect yourself, you're going to jail, not the criminal. And you said OK to that. And now we don't have any police. And crime is through the roof. It's through the roof. They, you can be driving down the road, smoking a joint, all happy. And a criminal can pull up against you and stop you and rob you right there in the street. And you said okay to that. Anyway. <laughs>